Hi, my name is Kirk Hamilton. I'm a practicing physician assistant of 30 years in nutrition, prevention, and integrative medicine, author, health educator, and host of this show, The Staying Healthy Today Show. Today's show topic is Alzheimer's disease, memory loss, and lifestyle factors that help. When we think of Alzheimer's disease and treatments, well, drugs really don't work that well. So there's not a, a lot of hope. But recently there was an article entitled that it was a September issue of the journal Aging entitled Reversal of Cognitive Cl Decline, a novel therapeutic program by Dr. Dale Bredesen. He's a neurologist from the University of California in Los Angeles and also he's part of the Buck Institute for Research on Aging in Novato, uh, California. And what he found out and what he did was very hopeful. First of all, he took 10 people with Alzheimer's disease who had memory loss issues and he put them on a program and within three to six months, nine out of the 10 had improvement in their memory and cognitive function. So what did he do? I'm just gonna read some of this list and there'll be a link to this table so you can read it yourself. And in fact, this whole article in the uh, video, the description below this video. But here's some of the things that they did. They looked at diet, they minimized refined carbohydrate, reduced carbohydrate, even reduced grains. Um, they had you kind of modified fast. Uh, you wouldn't eat anything for three hours before you went to bed, and then you sleep eight hours, so it's about a 12 hour fast. Reduce your stress, optimize your sleep, trying to get eight hours of sleep, maybe take a little melatonin or, or a tryptophan. Exercise 30 to 60 minutes a day, um, at least four to six days per week. Do some type of brain stimulation. Keep your homocysteine, any doctor can measure this amino acid, below seven, it's related to certain B vitamins and they give suggestions there. Uh, keep serum B12 above 500. Now that's very novel because most neurologists don't, or most medical people don't even pay attention to B12 until it's quote deficient in the low 200s. So keeping it above 500 with methylcobalamin was a suggestion. Keep your C-reactive protein low. That's a marker that we use, or I use, and many people do for heart disease to keep it below one, but that's also a general test of inflammation in the body. Fasting insulin, less than seven, and hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of diabetes, below 5.5. That's very important. Again, the blood sugar, keeping blood sugar even and low is really what we wanna do for uh, Alzheimer's disease. Hormone opti optimization talks about testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, pregnenolone, cortisol. You don't hear that in, in many circles. GI health, the gut has one of the largest immune surfaces in the whole body. We protect it by not eating foods that offend it um, and also eating prebiotics, uh, consuming prebiotics and probiotics and high fiber diets. Um, then there are some herbs that can help with certain um, formation of certain brain proteins, uh, curcumin and ashwagandha. Um, there was keeping vitamin D, big debate on vitamin D. They kept it between 50 and 100 nanograms per ml. Most doctors say if you get above 30, everything's okay. Maybe take some vitamin K2 as well. That helps put calcium in the right spot. Um, and then optimize antioxidants. The vitamin E family with tocotrienols, uh, eat blueberries, do a few other antioxidants. Optimize the zinc copper ratio. I, so if there's too much copper, it's an inflammatory compound. And what I see a lot, I measure both zinc and copper in the elderly, and I can tell you zinc is low in a lot of people. So that's something that should be measured. Make sure you don't have sleep apnea so you have oxygenation at night. Optimize mitochondrial function. That's the little energy powerhouse uh, in each cell. And that's with CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid, a variety of other nutrients. Increase uh, sirtuin, that's a, a longevity um, gene, and with resveratrol, comes from red, red wine and the skin of peanuts. And there's a few other things, long chain fatty acids from coconut, and also avoiding of heavy metal toxicity. So these were just some of the things, but this multifactorial approach resulted in improvement in memory in Alzheimer's disease patients in nine out of 10 peoples in three to six months. So there is hope. Again, I'm gonna put links to the tables I just read from, to the article I just read from in the description below this YouTube. Love you to read the article. Sign up for my health letter. You have a fabulous day. And remember, there is hope for Alzheimer's disease. Talk to you soon.